In the case of 27-year-old Lynn from Aberdeen, it's because of her addiction. Her drug of choice may not be illegal, but it's decimated her mouth. Hi Lynn, nice to meet you. How can I, how can I help you? I would just like to see um, if there's anything you can do for my teeth. Um, the lack of teeth that's in my mouth, the colour of them, and I have a really, really bad one up here at the back. It keeps getting abscesses reoccurring. And why do you think the teeth have got into this condition? I think it's with drinking up to 12 cans of fizzy drink per day. Really? Why so much? You name it, anything sweet, I had to have it. You got a sweet tea? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So pop yourself back on the chair and let's have a look. Lynn's mouth is a dental war zone. The fizzy pop's already taken 12 of her teeth and the rest are working their way loose. So I've had a good look at all your x-rays and photographs and I think you know as well as I do that some of those teeth are to the point where keeping them is not really going to be in your best interests. And really what I'm trying to propose is that your final cosmetic outcome could be something like this. What do you think about that? That's just what my teeth used to look like before. I feel quite angry actually with myself for letting my teeth get to that stage in the first place. The thing that makes fizzy drinks so bad for teeth is acid. The standard test for acidity is litmus paper and this sheet puts her drink at pH 4, nearly halfway between tap water and battery acid. And just look at what these acids do to a tooth over just one week. The weakened root's been stained permanently red. If you are going to drink fizzy drinks, there's a few things you can do to limit their damaging effects. Try and drink through a straw. Don't brush your teeth immediately after you've had fizzy drinks because you can actually then brush away some of the weakened enamel. And most importantly, never drink fizzy drinks just before you go to bed. Before Dr. James can start any work on her, she needs to kick her 12 can a day habit. I haven't had a fizzy drink for five days now. Today, she's having a CT scan to see how a replacement set of teeth might fit in her mouth. I never saw myself like that before. It's amazing. Once the scan is analysed, James will decide whether she should have temporary dentures or posh implants. Either way, there's one messy job that needs to be done first. What we're going to try and do today is take out all your teeth that we really can't save. So where you've got these little bits of root, we're just going to pop those out for you. Does that sound alright? Excellent. Have a seat and we'll get going. It's nice and open there for me then. A little bit of pushing, okay. Okay, almost there. First one's out, okay. Lynn's preference is to replace these old stumps with implants. But if Dr. James is going to agree to that expensive option, she'll need to kick another addiction. There's one other thing which hampers the body's ability to heal more than virtually anything else, and that is smoking. So the best thing you can possibly do is stop. Um, the implants, it's even more important that you don't smoke. And in actual fact, the success rate when we're normally doing implants is about 99.8%, which is you know, virtually guaranteed in healthy people. But if you're smoking, it goes down to almost below 50%. So it's a huge chance to the state where really we just don't do implants if people are smoking. So it's deal time. Are you definitely going to stop smoking? Absolutely, yeah. Excellent. Good stuff. <laughs>